we need to tell our application that we will be using SQL Server and you have to use this connection string to establish the connection with SQL Server. For that we will be using Entity Framework Core and we will have to create an object of the DB context. Using that DB context we will be able to make connection to the database. So how do we do that? It is best to create a new folder for all the data related changes. So here let me create a new folder with the name of data. Inside there we will create our DB context. We will create a class here and I will call that application DB context. You can use any name that you want here but I'm using DB context so that it's easy to identify. Let's add that class file. Now we need to inherit this class file from the DB context that is inside Entity Framework Core. In our project, we have not added Entity Framework Core right now. So there are two ways to add that. We know that this will inherit from the DB context, so we can type that and you will see the red squiggly lines. On there, if you press Ctrl dot, inside the suggestions, it will display that you can install a package Microsoft.EntityFrameworkCore that will automatically find and install the latest version. If you want to do that yourself, you can right click on the project and you can select Manage NuGet Packages or you can go to Tools, we have NuGet Package Manager and we can open up Manage NuGet Packages for solution. Here you will have to go to the Browse tab to see all the NuGet packages that are available. Now right now I'm using .NET 6 with the preview version, so I have checked the include pre-release right here. The package that we are looking for is Entity Framework Core. Let's press enter and the first package is Microsoft.EntityFrameworkCore. We are using the preview 7, so let me select that and we will install that. Once that is installed, if we go back to our application DB context and now if we press control dot here, it will tell us that we just have to add the using statement since we have already installed the package. So we will add the using statement for our DB context. Once we do that, then there is one line of configuration that we have to do inside the constructor of this class file. You can think of that as the general syntax that is needed to establish the connection with Entity Framework. So first we need to create a constructor. You can type CTOR and press tab twice. You can see it is a code snippet for constructor. So once you press tab twice, it should automatically create the constructor. We just have to write some parameters here because when we get the DB context, we need to pass that on to the base class which is DB context. So here we will have to configure the DB context options on the class that we are on right now which is application DB context. We can paste that here and I will call this options. So here we are saying that in the constructor here we will receive some options and those options we just have to pass to the base class which is DB context. This is a general setup that you have to do that will configure our DB context. Now once you configure our DB context, we still have one main feature. We still have to create our category table inside the database. So whatever models that you have to create inside the database, you will have to create a DB set inside the application DB context the file that we are currently working on. Now how do you create a DB set? That is pretty simple. We will say public DB set here and we need to write the model name. That model name is category and once you write that, you again see the red squiggly lines. That is because it cannot find anything with the name of category in the same file. We need to add the using statement to tell it that category is inside the models folder. So if we press control dot, we have that using statement. 
let's add that and the next parameter here is the table name so if you call this categories then inside database the table that will be created will be called as categories and not category so that looks good and we will add the getter and setter that's all that we had to do to create the category table what this will do is it will create a category table with the name of categories and it will have four columns that we have wrote inside the category model when it creates that table it will make sure that id is an identity column and name is a required field as well so you can see it is doing all the configuration by writing just few lines of code now when you are working with entity framework core there are two models one is code first and one is database first what we are doing is code first because here we are writing the code of our model and based on that model we will be creating the database so that is the code first approach database first approach will be something where database is already created and based off that database you will be scaffolding models i personally am a big fan of code first and that is what i have been using in all of my production application because i do not come from a dba management point of view i am more of a full stack developer who works with the code so if entity framework code will manage database for us i will be very happy with that approach so with that we have added our db set for the category table but we are missing one small configuration our application still does not know that it has to use the connection string that we wrote in app settings and it still does not know that it has to use application db context to create a db context and that it has to work with sql server so let's see how we can pull everything together in the next video